Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to another Decorate With Me. I'm Alessandra, and today we are continuing our Bridgerton-inspired series. And this week, we are moving on to Season 1, Episode 4, where there were two balls that really stood out to me. And the one that I think you're going to think of first, potentially, is the same as me. And that is the Trowel Bridge Ball. Very exciting. This uh, still, the picture that you see here, I found online. Shondaland has some behind the scenes uh, content that they shared. And so we had this great moment that was in that clip where the entrance with the oversized cages and, you know, some fire uh, eaters and all sorts of fun then we found uh, more pictures of the, essentially the ballroom that we see in this episode. And it's a very, um, what shall we say? It's a very uh, momentous ball for the feathering tins. There's a little bit of a breakthrough going on. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but for me, the takeaway I saw here was the kind of almost exotic... Um, curious, mysterious uh, essence of the black and white. You're kind of having that Harlequin masquerade moment. But then um, there's these beautiful garden elements that we see here, uh, these lush, uh, big arrangements. We have fruit. We have uh, these big cages where the entertainers are, uh, covered in greenery, the stage where the entertainers are. And uh, it's just a lot of... It's just kind of a dark... Uh, I don't want to say edgy, but just a, a more mysterious kind of vibe where some of the balls are a little bit more um, warm and golden kind of hues and just this one's a little bit more edgy. And then uh, when I watch the behind the scenes content from the Shondaland uh, crew that got uploaded, they had a person who was part of the, the staff and the design team that were talking about uh, part of the inspiration for this ball was actually m masquerades and in the Regency era apparently masquerade balls were very common and it was really a way for people to let loose and be a little bit more comfortable doing things you know dressing in ways they might not necessarily dress and it wasn't uncommon for men to dress as women women to dress as men and just all sorts of it maybe wouldn't typically be allowed in and I thought oh well that's kind of fun um and so uh that was just kind of a little tidbit that I I don't know it was just interesting to me when you see th uh, pictures like this this is Lady Tr uh, Bridge here on the left and she's of course wearing the black and white as most of the crew or the not the crew the actors wear a lot of the theme colors and so there's a lot of black and white and here we see on the right the entertainers with their oversized uh, hair and the black and the, now the ladies have a little bit of pink in them and I thought oh that's nice but we see this nice beautiful garland over here lots of greenery lots of candles a little bit of gold and I want I want you guys to notice the musicians here we have some special I don't want to say thoughts on that plans for that should you choose to go this route now, the color palette is pretty easy for me. I knew I wanted to do a black, a white, and then I, for my third color, I really wanted to stick with the green uh, because I think that stood out with the, the greenery that we do see here. I think we could have a lot of fun with this. So, taking this as our inspiration, I'm going for kind of a midnight garden masquerade with black, white, and emerald green. Now, I'm going to be using this theme very fluently as a, it could be a wedding, it could be a ball, it could be a birthday party, it could be an anniversary, whatever kind of celebration you want to use it as, please take these inspirational mood boards and use them how you see. All the products that you see moving forward are all going to be linked in the description down below. So if you want to recreate any of this yourself, this is very DIYable. Uh, for those so inclined and if not you could bring these pictures to your local event design team and I'm sure they can help you out. Now what we see here is a beautiful beautiful gazebo covered in white roses with a hanging chandelier that is black in the middle of it and 
giant oversized white roses. Now, there's a lot going on here, but I thought if we're having an enchanted garden party, essentially, at night, we need it to be bright, we want it to be beautiful, and I thought having the contrast between the beautiful white florals, uh, particularly roses, I'm really honing in on the roses here, and a crystal chandelier that's all black, I think is going to be really gorgeous, plus if you could get some black shiny drape, or just any black drape, but I like the shiny drape, I think it provides that kind of twinkling, uh, kind of fantasy vibe at night, and then I would love to see this party on a lawn in the evening time after sunset when it's nice and dark with lots of uh, string lights and whatnot. So that's why you're going to see a lot of this green kind of grass uh, because in my mind this is going to be a fantastic outdoor party uh, or wedding. You know, I could see this being a beautiful wedding altar if you were so inclined to do a unique wedding or if you wanted to turn this into a fabulous photo moment, it could be very fun too. Um, especially if you got a professional photographer to set up a booth for a selfie station or something, this could be absolutely stunning. And, uh, carrying on our masquerade theme, we got a lot going on here, but I thought, okay, if you're having a masquerade ball, I mean, people are wearing masks as it is right now, so maybe they're going to bring their own, maybe they're not, but it would be really fun to have a little table with some masks available and then you see here some beautiful arrangements, some nice tall vases with some topiary, some white roses in them, flanked by our oversized white roses. And then we're going to talk about this backdrop a little bit more in a, in a little bit here, but I just wanted to go over it really quick. This is a giant flower wall, which I made the graphics myself for the most part, so bear with me. <laughs> but it's essentially a greenery wall, like, you know, a boxwood essentially type wall with white roses on it. Then I flanked it on either side with white curtains and then black curtains, just to frame it up a little bit and make it a little bit more dramatic. And I thought this could be a really nice area for cocktail hour if it was like a reception after a wedding but before the formal reception started or just an entry area whatever you want to treat it as and i wanted to bring in a little bit of emerald so i found an emerald sequin tablecloth that i think would be delightful and a very simple but textured mercury glass uh tea light candle holder which i think is you don't need a lot for cocktail hour now equally if this was a wedding or something you could turn this into a super fabulous wedding cake display. You could turn it into like a whole moment. Or, or if you weren't going to do a wedding and you were just having a party, if you had like a signature cocktail or a fancy mixologist doing stuff, like a setup like this would be a really fun bar area. Um, I know I would have a good time. And of course, I love a good signature cocktail that matches. So we have some beautiful white cocktails here, but... Uh, whatever your heart desires. And then I love making sure we have a good sweetheart table at a wedding. And I figured, you know, this group is going to be an edgier group if this is a wedding. Uh, even if this isn't a wedding and you just wanted to have an anniversary table for the couple or you just wanted to have, I don't know, a VIP table, something, depending on what you're doing, this is going to be super, super fun. And again, we see the same backdrop here that I had earlier. This, you know, it could be interchangeable. You could use one or the other. You don't have to have both, but I thought because we have a lot of the black on black, I wanted to keep the texture going, and I love rosette table linens. I have one. I've used one <laughs> for my feathering entire t uh, tablescape that I made last spring that I actually did in person, so if you want to check that out, I will link to it for you. Um, but I love the texture that they offer, and I thought, okay, if we're going to have black roses here, we need to have some white roses. So this is a nice way to incorporate the black, the white, the green, and of course, because this is that kind of mysterious masquerade vibe, I love the idea of having really tall, high wingback chairs that can be really dramatic if we wanted to, and again, if there isn't a sweetheart table and this isn't a wedding, you could totally take this table out and this could be a really cute photo moment here. And especially with the oversized white roses, they're just perfect. And, you, you know, they're on black stands already, so you don't really have to do anything. You just have to drop them in and they're good to go. And, of course, some candles. If this is going to be a nighttime event, you need to have lots of beautiful candlelight because that just... 
that just makes the event amazing, in my opinion. Like, that's what can turn an event from, uh, okay, to, wow, like, candles do something to the human brain with the fire, and I, the more candles you have, the better. And obviously, safety first, so LEDs. So that's why we see some white LEDs on some black simple risers, nothing crazy that doesn't have to be too much. And then a simple luxury uh, kind of white rose vine. Doesn't have to be super full or anything, just kind of a, a rambling vine, if you will. Whether this is a regular party, a ball, a wedding, whatever you want, a fun black and white dance floor is going to make a huge difference. It's very easy to get a vinyl wrap for a custom dance floor, especially if it's only two colors. You'd be surprised about how easy and remarkably affordable it could be depending on your local vendor. But I found this one and I love the geometric uh, pattern of it. Of course, you could use the same uh, checkered square that they had in the uh, episode, but I thought this is just a fun way to make it a little bit more modern. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really into this. I think it's really fun. Now, in my mind, if you're having a proper ball party, whatever, um, maybe this is a New Year's party, I don't know, you're probably going to have a lot of people. 100 people, 200 people, 400 of your closest friends, I don't know. But even if it's a wedding, the average wedding in, in the U.S. is somewhere around 100 to 150, um, or at least pre-COVID. So having a decent-sized lounge that can scale and accommodate to the number of guests that you have is critical. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, if you're having a masquerade ball, it's way more fun with more people, right? So you're probably going to have a large guest count, I'm assuming. So that's, that's where <laughs> this mega lounge comes in. And this is a huge lounge. This has seating for, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, potentially. So we have two on an ottoman, two on the love seat. So it's essentially six per section. So you could have up to 24 people potentially sitting here. And we could, you know, we could squeeze in more if we needed to. But you could have seating for 24 people in this configuration because there's four sections uh, essentially that create this uh, four-sided lounge. And we have these beautiful tufted lounge uh, love seats, nice, nice tall wing back finish velvet, a coordinating velvet ottoman, tufted accent chairs, some green and white and gold cushion accents, and then how can we not include this beautiful beautiful i think it's like 13 foot i believe diameter i want to say it's like a weeping cherry tree i don't know but it's white it's beautiful and i loved it because it almost looks like it's just floating with that kind of delicate thinner not delicate but it's a thinner um trunk on the tree and i was like this is so cool especially if you hang a few lights in it this is going to look so cool at night. And of course, in between each of the four uh, love seats, if you put a little con like a little accent table, doesn't have to be super big, but just a, somewhere you want your guests to be able to put their drinks down for a minute and, you know, check their phones or talk to people or whatever. So making sure you have a little bit of surface area like that is always top of mind when you're creating a good lounge. But this is definitely an over-the-top lounge. And should you want to take part of this and <laughs> recreate it um, or the whole thing, literally every link that I used for all these products that I found all over the internet, I put all of them down below in the description so you can recreate elements of this if you so choose. All right, so we've got big altars or photo booths, we've got bars, we've got lounges, we've got dance floors, so what else do we need? Well. If we're having a sit-down dinner, we're going to need somewhere to sit, of course. So I love a good table arch. Uh, I have a whole playlist dedicated to table arches that I have done in my own home, which, quite frankly, are often over the top, uh, <laughs> if we're being perfectly honest. Um, but I love the idea of having these black chandeliers suspended from like this boxwood covered arch with some just beautiful white rose vines, the same ones we've been using on the table. To me, if you put the right bulbs in there, those candle flicker bulbs that look like they're real um, candles flickering, I mean, that's going to be gorgeous. And I love the idea of a satin, not a poly, but a satin 
tablecloth for this because in the evening time, especially if you get your lighting right, you have lots of candle, you have the right mood lighting in the area, the satin is going to have that nice soft shimmer to it without being obnoxiously sparkly. And I think it's going to play really well in this evening dark setting as opposed to the poly, which is just kind of going to literally turn into shadows and darkness. So that's why you're going to see satin tablecloths here. And I found this beautiful overlay. You can see it here. It's a chiffon kind of tool finish with pearls sewn on it. And they're very small and delicate. And I thought if you had that as, a, as an overlay or as a runner on this, Oh, I think it would look so pretty, especially if you had the rose vine and some votives on it. Like, you don't need a whole lot else with an arch going on like this, but you do need something on the table. So this would be that grand focal table that you might only put, I don't know, a few of these in the ballroom because you want to have some height throughout the room. You might only do like four to six of these or something, depending on the size of your party, but they're going to be really impactful. And on this table, I've opted for a clear, almost petal finish glass charger and just simple white napkins with a gold uh, stitching, almost scallop finish on the edges. And I've, I think I've used these napkins before, but I love them. I think they're so pretty. So, could you put three people on each side, four people on each side? Depends on the size of the table you use, obviously, but I think this would just be so pretty to sit under. I, especially if this was outside, it's going to look so cool. Now, another table that I wanted to do was another rectangular one that was lower and maybe a little bit more simpler, a little bit more over the top, not as over the top, but still impactful. And if you were a little afraid of DIYing any of this, this is probably the easiest one you could DIY. And I, let me tell you why. Where it's, you put a satin tablecloth down. You put a few of these little black, uh, they're kind of, ca they're candle risers, but they're very simple. And I want to say they're iron, but I'm not sure. Um, they ha come in a few different heights. You get a few different color or a few different height uh, LED white candles. I'm using white ones, not the traditional waxy kind of um, yellowy, not yellow, beige. We'll say, but, you know, like regular candle ones. Specifically using white for the most contrast here. Then we, you would just put your garland down, your rose garland, super easy. You, you literally just bend it. It's got wire in it. You shape it how you want it and have it kind of interweaving between here. And then the last thing you do is you put your little tea light votives in. Boom. That's all there is to it, but it's super impactful. And if you make sure you place your candles in the right spot, you won't have any line of sight issues with people seeing each other across the table. And now for this one, I opted for a different charger because I wanted a little bit more uh, pop of color on the table with all the black and the white going on. So that's why you see this green uh, with a little bit of a gold washed uh, charger, same napkins. And if you're doing this at home or on a smaller scale and you felt like being a little fancy, I found this beautiful black and gold matte silverware set that I think is just going to pop really pretty on this table. Again, you could put three people on each side, four people on each side, so you could potentially fit up to eight, maybe ten people at these tables. Depends on how you set up the table. And the last table that we're going to see is a round table. We are going to use another satin linen, but in this instance, I just wanted to show you what, if you wanted a little pop of color, a little green could be really, really pretty, especially in a dark outside setting. And what we see here is a white vase, nice and tall, so people can see each other across the table with minimal line of sight problems. The same white vine, we're going to be very cohesive. We have that just simply wrapped up the the base and then at the top again pardon my uh, graphics but this is just me trying to make my own <laughs> designs here we have a boxwood topiary ball and then we took a nice bouquet of white roses that are you know it's just a bouquet and cut them up stick them into the topiary ball and you could put as many or as little as you want up there but that's a really simple easy centerpiece to do and then you just put the same votives these are the votives that we've been using on all the tables boom you put them on there and because we didn't really have 
a lot of black in the centerpiece, I thought it'd be really nice to have a black charger on this table with a little bit of gold. And then of course her gold napkins and black and gold flatware if we went down that route. And that way we're, we essentially have a little bit of every color on each table. But I like, especially when you have a ballroom uh, setting where you have potentially 10, 20, 30 tables of, I don't know, rounds of eight, rounds of 10 potentially, having the same combination on every table to me gets a little boring. So I like mixing and ma matching my charger. So everything kind of goes together, but it's not exactly the same on every table. You know, it's, it just provides a little comfort for the eye. So. What kind of chairs do you use? A shivari in gold or white, or white and gold, you know, white with a gold cushion or something, or black. Uh, any of those are kind of everybody's go-to, and I could see them looking really pretty. There's obviously uh, fancier uh, chair rentals that you can get uh, that definitely, <laughs> the price definitely goes up very, very quickly if you're renting chairs um, beyond shivari. So, but it's very easy to get a black velvet and gold finished chair. Uh, just talk to your local uh, rental companies. They can help you out. And uh, last but not least, if we go back to what I hope you guys remember was the entertainment. The entertainment for this. I realize this isn't the best picture, but give me a second. There's a group that travels across the country called Nova Era. They are the same general uh, time period uh, as the Bridgerton window. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same, but it's pretty close. Um, and they dress up like this is a, a picture I was able to find of them, albeit not the best picture, but it is a picture. They dress up in um, the era essentially themed clothing and their music. They do music from that time window, but also they do today's music with a Baroque or Regency era vibe to them and I've seen them in person. I've used, I've booked them myself uh, years ago and my clients love them. And so if you are at the point where you're like, you know, we want, um, we want to spend the extra money. We want to have a really fun, uh, unique entertainment piece. This is where I would spend my money if I were you and I could fit it in my budget. And I am big on Pinterest. I love Pinterest pinning. I put so many ideas on there that I'll probably never need to reference again. But if you need more ideas, check out the link down below. I have a masquerade ball party ideas board on Pinterest where I have been pinning some of my favorites. And as always, friends, thanks so much for decorating with me today. I'm Alessandra and I've really enjoyed uh, creating this ball, this masquerade, this enchanted masquerade. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. If you know somebody who's planning a party that you think they might like something like this, be a good friend and share it with them. And if you like Bridgerton, you like Decorate With Me type series, you like seeing over the top party decor concepts, any of those things, make sure you subscribe because I share a lot of content along those lines and I have a lot of exciting stuff coming later this year and you're not going to want to miss it. All right, friends. I'm Alessandra. Thanks for decorating with me today.